Hi everyone, so I've had issues with the audio not working on this camera, but it's working now. Welcome out to the off-grid house. Uh, I've started to spend a lot more time here now because this part of the year, of course, the sun is starting to come back and all that. And it's doing absolutely fantastic. I just want to give a quick little <laughs> update whoops, on, uh, on my solar power electrical production system here, my off-grid power supply. As you can see, I'm actually working on some projects here. I'm working on a little tube amplifier experiment here and uh, got the tubes there and power transformers are wound and got my old multimeter there that I don't care very much about. I got my old oscilloscope which has a few problems this one of which is that the CRT is extremely weak on this thing unfortunately uh, so this thing is I had to fix this thing it had blown up input capacitors and uh, I found a lot of bad solder joints and generally bad connections in this thing but I did make it work pretty decently although this thing has a lot of weird issues which I just can't figure out and without a service manual for this nah, it's not gonna happen and this is a shiny scope anyway so I'm not gonna invest too much time into it it can view the audio frequency spectrum and that's all I care about uh, yeah the solar power system those of you who know me personally know that I have a big rack here on top let's go take a look at that first uh, I thought there was a pause function somewhere here, but I can't find it anymore. Okay, whatever. It's not possible to pause videos. Okay, fine. So, you just have to bear with me here. So, we'll walk around here to the back side of this. So, here we have the three old panels. These have been around for a long time. These are the first solar panels I got, and uh, they actually work pretty good, still to this day. They never were very efficient or powerful. I believe each one is like 6 watts, 7 or 8 watts, I can't remember. They're amorphous cells, very very old technology now, and uh, they're incredibly inefficient. I think they're like 2 or 3 percent efficient, and I'm not kidding, that's how terrible they are. <laughs> and up here we have the solar panel rack I was talking about. This thing has been through several storms now since I built it and it's holding up excellently. So solar panels sit there and, uh, and uh, got the wires running down to a little junction box here and uh, then the wire goes inside here. You can see it here. If you look from behind this is how it's constructed. quite simple and uh, it works extremely well and here's my extraction fan which can be useful sometimes when you emit a lot of smoke in here <laughs> and it's also very very nice to run that thing during the summer when it's extremely hot because it gets like 50 degrees in there I'm not even kidding so you run that fan and it gets rid of pretty much all the heat and you can actually well it's still going to be like 40 degrees but it's because that's what the ambient temperature is around here but uh, 40 degrees is less deadly than 50 degrees <laughs> and there's the holder I made my first proper welding project it actually turned out really good I got perfect welding whoops sorry I forgot to turn off the audio uh, <laughs> but yeah it held up it holds up very well see it there it's screwed to the frame of the house basically so yeah that's the solar power system the old panels are still hanging in there <laughs> helping as much as they can they don't produce a whole lot but they do still help the big panels so yeah that's very nice i believe those are 100 watts a piece and as i said these are almost no power at all compared to the big boys but i do still have these and why not use them this wooden rack has held up also okay through the years. You see it's starting to crack a little bit and all that, but yeah, yeah it's still holding up decently I would say. Although yeah it's 
it never was that great and uh, you can see here the extension that that took place here at some stage when I built this but yeah it's it's still there and you can see how this is held on to the house not particularly well at all but <laughs> it actually has held up just fine all these years and I expect it to hold up fine and these are all the screws that hold the plywood pieces to the wall in there and here we have my grounding electrodes there's one here you can barely see it now because it's overgrown but that wing is pounded like a meter down in the ground and then there's another grounding electrode here which is pounded another meter down in the ground let's go back inside now I hope the camera is still recording there's a problem with this camera I can't get it and I hate editing videos so like it'll be one shot you can just skip or whatever so yeah a few upgrades have been done here nothing really here to see uh, got a ground fault circuit in the Raptor and stuff like that I can't recall if that's new since last time I showed this stuff off but today here is some stuff which are new got these meters here this one is measuring the incoming power after the charge controller this one is measuring the total power consumption of everything in here so that measures the main negative coming off the batteries actually so that measures the total power consumption this measures how much power is going in after the charge controller these old meters are still in service the voltmeter is well obviously very simple it just measures battery voltage so that one is still in service this is the AC meter output of the power inverter and uh, that's more to give an indication that the inverter is on more than anything it's not particularly accurate and this PV current meter is before the charge controller this is the old current meter in the past I used my homemade regulator which was a relay controlled by a 555 and a comparator and all that and uh, it basically just kept the voltage between two set points all the time so it was not that efficient now we have this which is an MPPT solar charge controller called the TS1024 I believe um, got this on a gift card and I really like it the only thing I don't like is the float voltage is way too high it's supposed to be temperature compensated but it hasn't been hot enough yet for that to kick in um, we'll see if that works we'll find out soon enough uh, but yeah it's really really good this thing has more or less doubled the amount of power I'm getting in from the solar panels now I have never had this much input power as I have now with this this is actually really really awesome and I'm very pleased with it um, so I got that from a local store for gift card absolutely fantastic this power inverter was an investment and now because I invested in that I have kind of broken the zero budget rule with this place but it was such a small investment uh, that I thought why not just give it a shot this once uh, because before everything here is junk that's kind of the whole idea of this place is make something with nothing and uh, that's what I've done but this is kind of an exception because I bought this actually uh, before I was using this and I call this the rust bucket inverter because it's extremely rusty and uh, falling apart and it works it still works fine to this day the only problem with it is that all the capacitors are going bad and the other problem is it cannot do any sort of like peak power whatsoever if you try to turn the computer on over there it just shuts off it's yeah it's very irritating i modified it by putting in some uh ntc's there and that helped a lot but it still has the problem unfortunately <laughs> but yeah it still works fine and i'm keeping it in case this thing craps out 
this is actually a real pure sine wave inverter and it actually puts out a very nice sine wave uh, if you watch the video about this you will know unfortunately I was not able to take it apart because I won't be able to get it back together because of their stupid design so I won't take this apart until it actually blows up or something like that if it ever does that I don't know but uh, so far it's actually been really reliable it's running right now as you speak as you can see here it's not doing anything I haven't got anything to run I just got the phone charger there <laughs> just hanging there but yeah it's actually working really really well and uh, I must say I am very impressed uh, 2200 watts is an obvious fat lie however I put 600 watts on it and it doesn't complain so for the price I paid I'm happy I don't know what it can do I don't really feel like pushing it too hard I am I don't want to blow it up because it really works well and uh, it's got fantastic load regulation and it's got truly fantastic sine wave output it's cleaner than the mains power uh, I think it has a SPWM driver in it because yeah it's beautiful the efficiency of this thing seems pretty damn good as well when you compare how much power you're using versus how much power is going into it it is actually close to 90 percent so i am extremely impressed but yeah i haven't pushed it to its limits i don't know if i want to because a lot of these cheap inverters don't have proper protection circuits so it is possible it could blow up but i've been kind of mean to it with my you know heavy inrush currents from the old computer there and stuff that thing pulls quite a bit of inrush when you flip the switch on and uh, it doesn't complain at all it has great and i mean truly fantastic load regulation the voltage is set to 225 and uh, it keeps 225 no matter what you do i i'm very impressed and the frequency is bang on 50 as well it's 50.0 which is just perfect however i have noticed that the frequency is a bit low when it's colder outside so that's a bit interesting but it is within like two percent of 50 hertz all the time it is absolutely perfect and i have no reason to complain I really wish I could have taken this apart I would have loved a proper look inside but from what we could see by taking the ends off this thing does look decently powerful not 2200 watts that's an obvious lie but definitely as I said I put 600 watts on it it didn't care at all but I think it can probably handle about a thousand watts without blowing up but I'm not sure if I would dare push it harder than that. Out here, I don't use more. With the lights on, the computer on, soldering iron and phone charger, and the oscilloscope, I don't come anywhere near to even 300 watts. So it's perfectly fine. I don't need a super powerful inverter. The main reason I bought this was because I wanted something with pure sine wave output. And I had seen on YouTube people testing this brand of inverter and uh, it actually had a pure sine wave and I was a little bit I got interested and when this popped up on uh, some Chinese website I decided to give it a shot because the return shipping was free so if I didn't like it I was gonna return it but this thing ended up impressing me a lot very beautiful sine wave output and uh, yeah I it's actually a really great inverter for the price I paid sixty dollars for it yeah <laughs> obviously you can't expect super high quality or anything for for that so I have no idea how it's going to hold up long term but for what I do out here you know this inverter is more than adequate and the pure sine wave is beautiful I don't need anything anything better than this this is plenty for me so 
Yeah, I'm actually quite happy with this. I thought it was going to be a junk piece of junk when I got it, but no, it's no, it's not. It's actually a very very good inverter for the for the money. And uh, yeah, I'm very impressed. We got my somewhat new batteries. They are a few years old, but they work pretty good. And uh, this is water from the roof <laughs> condensation dripping on here. These are proper refillable types. So I expect these to last a really good long time. Uh, they're not in perfect condition unfortunately but they're not in bad condition either so that's always great uh yeah let's see what else is it to talk about i cleaned up a little bit i used to have a huge mess of wires just on the floor here because the box collapsed now i got new boxes and they're sitting on a wood pallet so the moisture shouldn't kill them they'll still get slightly soft but i don't think they'll rot away now at least uh, here's the uh, audio amplifier it's my homemade 175 watts very hard to make actually it's harder than you think to get these big power numbers because the dissipation and output devices get really really big got uh, an ic amp which currently doesn't have a power supply if i remember right we have a little this is actually a commercially made but I put it into my own case designed for guitar use or something like that but unfortunately I blew up the output IC in it by driving a transformer with it when I was doing some kind of test I drew a transformer and I don't know what happened but I think the back EMF from the transformer probably killed it so it just completely shorted out and blew the fuse <laughs> so I need to get a new IC for it I can probably purchase one very shapely, but I don't. Nah, I don't feel like investing money. And as I said, zero budget place. And here we have a box of junk electronics, which I pull parts from. Maybe I should have a look here and see if I have an IC that'll work. Chances are I do. Got my Synergy Horn loudspeaker. But yeah, and uh, here we have some loudspeakers for testing stuff. And we got some transformers and vacuum tubes because currently I'm working on a little vacuum tube product. Instead of doing it in the dark, depressing workshop, why not take it out here and use some solar power and do it here? Uh, because there's literally no reason not to. And we got the Pentium 3 computer here, which is a trash pick as well. Uh, and this thing is more than powerful enough to browse the web. You just have to install Pale Moon SSE web browser, otherwise you can't browse the web on something like this today. Because the processor doesn't support the SSE2 instruction set, which modern web browsers require, and a lot of other software as well. So you've got to look for older versions of software that don't need SSE2. So I've actually found a good collection. I've got VLC, I've got web browser that works i've got youtube video downloader that works and stuff like that so i can actually watch videos on this but you gotta download them in 480p or lower and play them in vlc because it cannot keep up with youtube's modern html player but yeah it's more than good enough for browsing the web and schematics and stuff so i can use it for this stuff there's literally no reason for me to spend time in the dark depressing workshop this part of the year because i can do everything out here and i don't have a lot of stuff out here but you know with an oscilloscope and a multimeter you can get quite far in life and this is my junk oscilloscope as i said i don't really care about it if it gets damaged by moisture or whatever i doubt it will but you know if it does get damaged it's not something i'm going to cry about because this thing has so many weird issues i just haven't been able to fix i think it needs a realignment or something and that's not something i'm able to do because there's like ten thousand trimmers in this bloody thing so nope i'm not gonna touch it because i'm just gonna make it worse than what it already is 
I've had to change a few components and a few capacitors and stuff that were severely damaged by over voltage I think on the input side but yeah now we're pushing some voltage here we're up to 14 volts pushing 75 watts it's actually a bit higher because this current shunt reads a bit low we actually when it, it's saying 5.3 right now let's see what it's actually putting in 5.6 so yeah it's a bit on the low side but then again i don't know how accurate this is either but i doubt these are 100 percent accurate yeah we're sitting at 14 volts right now which is great can turn off the inverter here because i'm not using it right now and we can push even more power into it yeah we don't have a lot of sun right now you can see it's very uneven and all that but still we're getting 75 watts according to this and that's about right it's probably closer to 80 though since the current shunt is a bit off and uh, that's that's very very good i am very happy with that and uh, you know these batteries are almost always fully charged i have not been able to drain them much at all really i ran the computer last night for like two hours without any input from the sun really and the batteries are still at like 90 percent state of charge or something so they have decent capacity they don't have great capacity but they have decent capacity so yeah they're kind of they're okay could definitely be better though but uh, i don't feel like spending money on batteries it's meh this will do fine and i reckon these should last for a couple of years at least i don't think they're gonna last terribly long because i don't think these are deep psycho batteries but meh whatever yeah as you can see there's 0 0.9 watts of draw here with everything off and that's actually measuring the current that the meters themselves are <laughs> are using so there's always going to be a tiny bit of draw so yeah nothing slips through every bit of consumption gets measured and we have a kilowatt hour meter here and also an amp hour meter <laughs> i should set a date on which i reset this that could be a good idea oh yeah 14.1 volts it's gonna take a while to short these back because i used a bit of energy last night but it's not gonna take that long just a couple of hours and they're gonna be full again because uh, i really didn't use a whole lot of watt hours and you can see my production is greater than my consumption as well we got 840 watt hours since i reset this last and we got 673 watt hours consumed so we do actually we're actually keeping up with how much power i'm using without much problems so that's actually pretty damn good yeah not much to say really yeah this charge controller i think i already mentioned it but you can't adjust the float voltage which is extremely irritating so it's like set at 14.0 float voltage which is way too high in my opinion it is supposed to be temperature compensated but i haven't seen that function work yet i hope it's just because it's not been hot enough in here yet uh, i really hope that it does have temperature compensation because if it doesn't well i'm gonna be slightly concerned but yeah we'll see yeah that's all i have to say spending some time out here and uh, it's always an enjoyable time it's much more enjoyable than sitting in the workshop and it's nice and warm in here it's like 20 degrees right now it's still fairly cold around here around this part of the year over here so it's just like 10 degrees outside perhaps and uh, the sun doesn't shine super bright but it does at least shine and that's enough the temperature in here is perfect right now and uh, yeah you'll be surprised actually in the summer you think it would get slightly colder in here during the evening but no the stones and everything in here they have a lot of thermal mass <laughs> well yeah 
It's very enjoyable. And here's the exhaust fan. I got this cover on it. Otherwise, birds will fly in here and not find their way out. So I got that thing blocked when I'm not using it. Well, yeah. I'm pretty satisfied with all this. I don't know when I'll upload this video. I currently don't have much in terms of internet access out here. So, and I want to upload it out here. I don't want to upload it from my computer at home, you know. I want to up upload it here. <laughs> yeah, pretty damn happy with all this. It's all working real good. See you.